What is up, Bruins fans? Today I'm going to bring you a clip from episode 359 of the Black and Gold Hockey Podcast, where hosts Sam Smith, Mark Allred, Dom Tiano, and myself discuss the latest rumors around Bruins goaltender Jeremy Swayman. Back to the Black and Gold Hockey Podcast, and uh, we, uh, we're going to start the second half of the show with an update on Jeremy Swayman. Jeremy Swayman is uh, officially... Not going to arbitration, he said. Well, no, 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 no. Not at, he, at least he did not declare. <laughs> Tomorrow, right. the Bruins still have a shot to have still have a the right to uh, declare for arbitration. Mm. But Swayman said no. Um, as the Swayman saga continues here, uh, we still await any possible contract information on him. We don't know what's going on. All we know. Swayman says no. What are our thoughts? Um, I, I, you know, arbitration is good because it creates a deadline. But when you pass that deadline and end up going to the meeting, then all hell breaks loose. Exactly. I don't think either side wants to go to it. Um, the the other good news is any team um any so the Bruins can still file for arbitration up until 5 p.m tomorrow um if swayman had signed or had gone to arbitration then he could no longer sign an offer sheet okay the Bruins have till 5 p.m tomorrow any NHL team had to have an offer sheet in by 5 p.m. tonight to negate uh, Swayman not being able to sign an offer sheet should the Bruins file for arbitration. So two deadlines passed tonight. Um, I don't think it's coming going to arbitration. I think I think both sides know what it's going to take. It's just when you're talking a contract of eight years and around $8 million, it all comes down to how the money's paid out. And I I think that's what it is. For sure. uh, Oh, go ahead. No, all you, Mark. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, this is something that I don't believe – uh, just by hearing the quotes from Jeremy Swayman last last year when they went through this process, it was it was it was ugly. You could see it in his face and in, in his um, in his uh, manner when he was talking about it. So I don't think both sides want to get there. Um, but I'm not totally freaking out about it either because um, I, if I'm not mistaken, on Puckpedia, which we're now using because Cap Friendly is officially gone. Um, you know, I think that we have what close to nine million Dom in in cap savings. Eight million five hundred and seventy three thousand three hundred and thirty three dollars well, and thirty three cents. So they have the Boston Bruins have <coughs> about eight point five million to get Jeremy signed uh, locked in, and I think that that the that was the plan all along. And it's been the priority all along. Um, One thing that many people need to understand is there's no like real list. As much as I wanted this done ahead of time, this, this is all calculated by what they're doing and so on. It's a business and and so on, but I still think it, a deal gets done no matter what, because they, they are saving that much money, which we're all thinking the 7.5 to 8.5 million range. So if they weren't interested in keeping the player, then that money would have been eaten up a long time ago. So it seems like they're saving it. I think things will be uh, all set and ready to go, and there's no need to freak out. For sure. And I, th- I think it's as sort of Mark's point, right? It was expected that the Bruins likely, and Swayman as well, likely wouldn't be heading to arbitration following last year's more or less debacle. You heard it from Swayman himself how – discontent he's seen with the entire situation so it really was only a matter of time and i still think uh you know development camp we even saw swimming over there right what was going to be coming they're clearly in talks of a contract i think it's only a matter of time now sort of hashing out the final details 
in my personal opinion, this is all speculative, of course. I do think it's only a matter of time before this deal gets done. Yeah, I mean, they wouldn't have – he wouldn't have been at Warrior Rice Arena this week if there wasn't at least something going on. I mean, he was there, right? Mark, you can attest to that. He was, at, he was there watching development camp. There yep. had to have been talks going on during that time, right? I Look. don't know about that. I think it's his. I think his agent is doing a lot more of the talking than Jeremy yeah. is. But I'm sure Swain is definitely in the room for some of those discussions because it's his money. Let's be. <laughs> oh no, no, that's that's what they pay the agent for. The players are very rarely are in the room or or in the discussion. The, the agent does the negotiating, then he calls the player and says, "Look." this is the best deal I can get for you. I suggest you take it or, you know, I I'm sure Swayman isn't even getting daily updates mm. now. Hopefully, hopefully he's staying off Twitter. <laughs> now, oh, Twitter's a nightmare that, right now. It is awful. Oh. The fact that he's in Boston speaks volumes mm. and he's not back home in Alaska. Yeah. Or up Alaska. in Maine. Right. They also wouldn't have featured him in the schedule reveal video that they did mm -hmm. the other day if he wasn't at least planning on coming back next year. He was in that video with McAvoy and Marshawn with horrendous acting all around, but that's okay. No. It was still hilarious to see him there, all of them there with David Andrews, Patriots, uh, I mean, Patriots offensive lineman. Uh, I... I would not like he wouldn't have been in that video if at least there was something coming soon, right? Right. That's just that's just my take on it. If if they were smart and if they weren't so sure, they would have had Pasternak in that video instead of Swayman to be safe. But the fact yeah. that he was in there makes me think, oh, they're they're close. At least they're on the right path on something. So that's my thoughts. Any more thoughts on Swayman? Do you think, uh, do we have a timetable? What do you guys think when this deal could be done? I'm not asking if you guys know anything, but. It'll be done by opening night. Nice. <laughs> yeah. No, my, I, I made a prediction for our video here on the YouTube channel. I said July the 7th, so I might as well stick with that one. Sunday. All right. Fair yes. enough. Now, what's the next topic? Where's, where are we talking about development camp? Okay, let's stick with Jeremy Swayman for a second. But I want to <laughs> I want to move it in a different direction. All right. Um, I'm I'm in the midst of writing an article, and um, one of the biggest complaints is how much worse the Bruins goaltending situation is that they traded Allmark and got Corpusello back. Whether it's Bussy, whether it's Corpusalo, whether it's Di Pietro, who ends up being the backup. I want everybody to take a step back, take a breath, and think about it like this. Okay. Jeremy Swayman and Linus Allmark almost did a 50 50 split. It's 41 games apiece. Okay. Did the Bruins' goaltending get worse? by moving Allmark, okay? Take his 41 starts. Swayman's gonna get 55 to 60, okay? 14 to 19 of Allmark's starts have now gone to Swayman. Is that goaltending worse? Whoever yes, you're on, back- yeah, Yes, on one condition. If Swayman gets hurt, then this goaltending has gone to shambles. Well, right. yeah, but uh, hold on. Hear me out. <clears throat> Whoever your backup is, you start them against the San Jose's of the world, the Columbuses of the world. You, you protect the backup. How many more losses, considering when you look at the goaltending situation like that, how many more losses do you expect this year over last year? Not much. 10. 
Because yeah. Yeah. The, the, the other problem becomes, right, is to put it in, like, if we're going to play the context game, Swayman hasn't played a full season, right, in, in his starter role. And you also have to take into consideration that, sure, come playoff time, he looked great this year, but he was also on plenty of rest, right, where – he might get banged up halfway through the year, have to keep playing because he's the starter, the go-to guy. But before you could sub in a guy like Allmark to take that role. Right. And I understand that. But uh, on the, the other side is making the argument without knowing what's going to happen. The goaltending has got like Corpusello had his best year in LA with who as his goaltending coach. You guys know him. Oh yeah, Bob Asenza. Yeah, that's a key, that that's going to be a, a key factor for Corpusalo is is how he's going to come into Boston and, and and work out, train, and be ready for the upcoming year. Um, uh, but that's not, not wait, Mark. You know you know Brandon Bussey and how hard he works. There's oh, nothing to say that he can't go into camp and steal it. Oh, no, I'm not saying that. There's going to be a very healthy competition right? in training camp this this fall. It's going to be so interesting to see. We're not. This is a year that we're not going to be going. Okay, it's going to be all Mark and Swayman. Now it's like it's Swayman and a huge question mark because nobody has, at least right now, as we're talking in in early July, has solidified that backup role quite yet. Right, but I, I'm I'm saying to the people that say the goaltending has got worse without any context or without any thought to consider my side without any context or any thought. And, and I do hear what you're saying, Dom. I, I really do. But if you're asking me objectively, if the Bruins goaltending got worse from this deal, yes. How much worse we can argue that. And I think that's a perfectly fair, your, your, your argument certainly fits well within that. But if we're just looking at it objectively, did the Bruins school tending get better or worse? In my opinion, it got worse. Well, That's yeah, it got worse, but it's not as bad as people are making it out to oh, be. Oh, no. 100%. Right. No, 100%. I, I don't think yeah. anyone's – well, obviously some people think that considering what we've seen. But in my personal opinion, no, I, I don't think it's as bad as people are saying, but it has gotten worse a little bit. Yeah. Well, I, I'm not saying it's declined, but – People are talking like Corpusala is going to go in there and start 41 games. <laughs> and he's not because they're not going to pay Jeremy Swayman $8 million a year to sit on the bench for half a season. Right. No, they're not. To. They're not going to. Um, it'll be a very competitive training camp. It'll be a very competitive preseason, kind of figuring out who, where people slot in. So we'll see what happens with that. We'll see who gets the backup role. We'll and hopefully next week, by the time we speak again, hopefully Swayman will be locked up so the fan base can shut up about it. I hope it goes to opening week. <laughs> Dom just wants like I, total chaos. You are playing <laughs> devil's advocate tonight, and it's not fun. Like, <laughs> you know, I keep I've been telling Mark for two years now. Controversy sells, <laughs> yeah. and and. And that's what you need, man. Is that's funny. Just, just to watch the meltdown. Oh. Like, you know, uh, Twitter's a field day right now. If you look up the, if you look up Swayman on Twitter, you scroll through the latest. You'll be scrolling for hours, and it's like Don Sweeney. Why the f have you not signed him yet? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> it's like just going for hours. Like, yeah. Take a chill pill. Relax for a little bit. It'll be all right. They'll, they'll, they're going to do it. They'll sign the, it. The favorite wow. one is, is is that. But that Parker McLean said he was going to sign an eight times eight deal <laughs> by July the 7th. <laughs> I oh. made sure to put a disclaimer on the bottom. This is a prediction. <laughs> but, you know, people won't read that, Parker. So, ne so Sunday night when he doesn't sign that contract or Monday morning when people wake up and he doesn't sign, they're going to be like, oh, this Parker guy has no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> See, but but when it happens and it's an eight point two five by eight mil by eight years, I, I I better be put on like the the Herald or whatever your Boston paper is. Boston Globe, Boston Herald. Uh, yeah. You'll be put on every national media outlet out there. You, you know, blackandgoldhockey.com. Yeah, that too. 
<laughs> like what you saw? Be sure to come back next week for episode 360 of the Black and Gold Hockey Podcast where hosts Sam Smith, Mark Allred, and Dom Tiano discuss the latest rumors and updates on Bruins free agency and the world of Boston Bruins. See you then.